Hey Tool Talk, um, welcome back to another video. This time uh, we have the pinion to install and this is a, a little chunk of how to set up the pinion inside the differential and to get your preload on the crush collar. Uh, this also will have some tips in it um, on how to uh, install it, get the bearings on and, uh, and in, in a very difficult place how to actually install it into the axle since the bearings are um, a pretty close fit or at least the thou fit and uh, getting that rear bearing onto the pinion is pretty difficult. Now, I'm gonna give you some uh, tips here uh, to get that on under the truck. Um, if your axle is out, it's pretty easy just to, to get a, a socket on there and smack it in first time, be done with it. But under a truck, it's a little unique, so um, stay tuned. There's a, a lot of good stuff in this video, and uh, this is gonna get our pinion set up, and then I'm gonna end it there and then the next video will be the final install for the differential and then uh, checking the pattern and getting everything put together. So um, it's come together and I'm excited to finally put a, a finish on this and then we can go to the rear axle and get the, uh, the big spline, 35 spline, Dana 60 shafts put in the Dana 44 and to get to the real hardware and some really cool videos that I have uh, coming. Uh, the shipment came in this week and we're going to uh, also do the the rear diff. Uh, it won't be as as uh, intense as this one since we're doing everything right now. You'll have an idea how to rinse and repeat for the rear axle as well. So stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoy this video. You're comfortable with, with, uh, with the uh, <clears throat> I know that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm writing all my measurements down. I'm going to subtract the measurements from the old pinion to the new. And you'll see on this one, this is a zero, this is a 0, .00 tolerance, so it's set up to be dead on. So if the other pinion is anything other than zero, I'm gonna have to change the shims out and subtract from this one. Yeah. And you'll see the shims on this one are, I uh, got rotated out. Yeah, that's zero. At this point, what I wanna, wanna, wanna make note for the guys who are DIY, even when you spend you know, the hundreds of dollars on the tool and it has the extra long handle for installing bearings. There was just no way that thing was gonna go in there unless I took a Dremel and just hit the edges. I just sanded the entire circumference of the bearing race and just, I mean like a hair all the way around it. Put it back in there, use a light, uh, light coat of um, uh, axle grease and, it's, and it went in. So. If you're having trouble here, hit it with some sandpaper, hit it with a, a, a drum sander um, type of bit on a, on a uh, Dremel, and it'll, it'll pop right in there. There should have been no reason that I had to beat the snot out of this thing to get it to go in. So I spent hours on it. I actually froze this and put it in a freezer and tried that as well. None of that stuff works. So um, if you're going to put in your race just go ahead and, and hand, hit it with sandpaper and hit it with a, a sanding drum on a dremel and it'll go in all right so i pre-greased these got some royal purple all over those i got the axle back or i got the pinion back in place all right if i put the pinion flange on I won't be able to get enough of the threads here to allow me to throw on the old nut to set to get it start to start to get the uh, gear set up. So I, instead of trying to knock this on, I'm going to throw on a large socket. Now this is a 36, 35 millimeter. Try something a little bigger. See if that was enough. 
we're not going to put the we're not going to put the uh, seal on here yet. But that will just make things worse for right now. So, as a technique, I'm also going to take the washer, coat it in oil, coat this in oil, and then I'm going to use a drive, an impact wrench to drive that. And then that will be how I get my preload set on here. And uh, you can use a large breaker bar, but I'm sitting under. A truck on the driveway. It's not an option for me. Alright, so there's still some play in there. As you can see, that is not um, not what we want. I don't want it to have any play. So my bearings are greased and there is no play in there. So that's good, but remember when we started this, I had about 30 inch pounds. Right now, if I put that torque wrench on there, that thing would be just spinning freely. So I'm gonna grab a bolt from over here so I can get a little bit better hold on this thing. So I'm just doing this to give me a grip because even though it's an impact wrench, I still want to spin. I want to be able to just grab it with my, my hand without it running around on me. So I'm just going to put a couple bolts in there. And hit it again. We're trying to get that crush collar to go down. Let's just do that. Alright. Okay. There we go. Alright, that might have that might have been perfect right there. So let's stick the yeah, move around a little bit. Might have just got it right on the first try. Might have been a little much, but that's what I wanted. Alright, so let's get the inch pound wrench on there. See if we're at 30, 20 to 30. That's where I want to be. All right, and if you smash this down enough, see if I turn it enough, I get about 20. Right at 20 as I'm moving it. If I stop, if I'm steady on it, I get like 19. If you crush it down and it's like 30, you're gonna have to, or go, if you go like 40, 50, 60, if you crush it down and then back the nut off ever so slightly and tap it, that's how you can check to see if it's too loose. Because if it's moved at all, when you tap that back this direction, uh, you'll know the nut's too loose and then you've lost your preload. 
So at, to me, that's a, a good way to cross check it is to, s to smack it this way. That might loosen up the bearings and I've still got 20, 10 to 20. So that is what Dana and all of the gear, um, gear manuals say. I've got a Yukon gear install kit. So I got a Yukon gear um, book for this. So right now I'm at a good stopping spot and I'm going to flip around the front and we're going to uh, set up our diff. All right, Tool Talk, um, we can be proud of today and, and finish that up. Uh, all these little things kind of add up over time. Uh, you can knock a lot of this out in one weekend if you're just doing gears. Um, but since we are doing an ARP locker, there was a lot to drill. There was a lot to uh, get fitted right. Um, I've got some tips and tricks for the uh, pinions um, to uh, get the... Uh, you know, get the pinion set up and uh, allow you to do this from your home. Um, I don't actually have a shop um, press, but I have friends in town that do. And if you can't, you can always hire somebody and pay them. I actually bought a guy a ribeye steaks and he pressed on my bearings for them. So that's what you saw in the video. Uh, you got to do what you got to do. So I, you know, it's funny. Um, you could have some pretty expensive tools, uh, but I still, as long as much as I've been doing this, I'm overseas, I'm military, I'm making it up so that you can understand that anybody can do this if you have the right resources. So put those to the test, get your, um, you know, get your hands dirty and enjoy doing this stuff. It's really fun. Uh, this is right up there with wheeling because once you get this stuff done, you know, you're going to have a, a truck that you can send, uh, you know, send on the trail and not have to be too concerned about, you know, twisting axles or, or damaging something because you know, if it happens, you're just going to fix it. No big deal. It, li it makes me sweat less when I'm on the trail knowing that I, you know, now that I know how to do it and I have the tools to do it, it'll get done. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe and like, and, uh, you know, keep my enthusiasm up. Keep me motivated. Comment in the, you know, keep me in the comments. Let me know what you guys think and, um, I'll get to the next video soon.